Gantt charts are handy for planning and managing project tasks over time. They give a visual representation of the whole project, displaying progress to date and work to come. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build Gantt charts in Excel using conditional formatting. We'll also look at how we can highlight tasks that are overdue and the current date. So be sure to watch to the end. Here I have a list of tasks, the start date, estimated duration of the task, the completed days so far and the remaining days. Now just note that my dates are formatted day, month, year. Now I often get asked, how do you calculate the completed days? And the answer is, well, that will be unique to your organization. For example, it might simply be date driven, or you might review each task and calculate how many days worth of the project you've completed so far. So for the purpose of this example, I've just manually entered values. And then the remaining days is simply the difference between the estimated days and the completed days. To calculate the completion date, I'm going to use the Workday International function so that I can ignore weekends and holidays. But I'm going to start with if is blank. I just want to check that this date is not blank. So if it equals blank, then I'm going to return blank. Otherwise, we'll use Workday International. Now, if you don't have Workday International, you can use Workday. Workday International simply allows you to specify which days your weekend falls on. So my start date is here and I'm just going to minus one so that it doesn't assume that my first day is already over. And then how many days am I adding? Well, the estimated days. And then my weekend falls on a Saturday and Sunday, so I want number one. And then I can add a list of holidays. I'm going to leave that blank, but if you have a list of holiday dates, you can reference them here. Let's close parentheses on Workday International and close parentheses on if. And there's my completion date. So I'll just double click to copy that down. So now I'm ready to apply my conditional format. So I'll start by selecting all the cells that I want to format. And then on the home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, new rule, and I want to use a formula. Now there are two criteria. So I'm going to start with the and function. The first criteria simply checks whether the start date is less than or equal to the date in the first column. Now I'm just going to F4 to absolute just the row there and on the start date I want to absolute the column. So that's my first logical test and then we're going to use Workday International again to find the end date. So we reference the start date minus one and then we're adding the estimated days and then our weekend dates are type one. Let's just go and fix the absolute referencing here. So we want absolute reference on the column there and there. So I'm just using F4 to toggle through. So I'm comparing the end date to see whether it's greater than or equal to the date in the current column and we're F4 to absolute just the row. And I'll close parentheses on and Let's go and apply the format. I want a cell fill color in this bright green. I'll click OK and OK. So you can see it's highlighted more than just the remaining days, but as I keep adding conditional formats, those are going to sit on top of this first formatting rule. The next rule is the completed days. So again, conditional formatting, new rule, and we want a formula. Now the formula is the same almost, so I'm just going to copy in the previous one. And instead of C5, which is our estimated days, I want my completed days. So I'm just going to change that to D5. And then let's go and set the format, which will be this dark green. OK and OK. So now I can see the completed days. Next, I'll apply the rule for my estimated days. And again, it's with a formula and I'm going to paste it in. So the formula here is almost the same as well. We just need to add another criteria. So I'm going to check whether the estimated days and F4 to absolute just the column is equal to the completed days. And again, just absoluting the column. So now we have three criteria here. I can apply the formatting and the estimated days are just going to be a paler shade of green. So this one here, okay and okay. You can see the conditional formats layering on top of each other to highlight the cells accordingly. The next thing I want to do is highlight the overdue tasks. And there are a few ways we can do this, so feel free to make modifications. For example, you could highlight the task name in column A, or you could highlight the days where work should have been completed in pink. Now I'm going to do the latter. 
Notice that I have a date up here. This is today's date for the purpose of this tutorial. So I would expect these two cells here to be highlighted as overdue. So I'm just going to select the cells again. So new rule using a formula. Now the beginning is the same. So I'm just going to paste that in. And next I need to check if the dates completed so far are less than the current column. So we use the workday international function for that. And I'm starting with the start date, F4 to absolute just the column, minus one, plus the days completed so far, and my weekends are type one. And we're checking whether this is less than the current column, F4 just to absolute the row. And then I've got one more check, and that is whether the current column is less than today's date. Now I could use the today function here in place of the cell reference, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I've hard keyed my date in a cell. The today function will dynamically update, you won't need to edit it. So let's go and format this in this pink color. Click OK. And you can see there, these two dates are overdue tasks because we're currently on the 2nd of December which leads me on to the last format I want to apply. And I want to select the days at the top as well. We're just going to highlight the current date using a new rule, which will be a formula. And this one's dead easy. It's just whether the current column date, F4 to absolute just the row, is equal to today's date. And again, you could use the today function here. Let's go and format this. I'm just going to put a pattern in the cell that's going to allow the colors to shine through. Click OK and OK. So you can see that is today's date. We could change the date here. Let's just see the effect of the conditional format. You can see now we're on Monday the 12th of December. So all of these tasks are overdue. Now, if you have trouble with the conditional formats not displaying correctly, one reason may be their order. You can modify it by the conditional formatting manage rules dialog box. And you can see the order they're in here. And as I set them up, the first format I set up is at the bottom and so on. So if I rearrange these, for example, put this on at the bottom and then click apply, you can see this rule is being overridden by the rules above it. So it needs to be up here towards the top so that it shines through. Another reason you might have problems with conditional formats is if you don't get your absolute referencing correct. And I've created a video that shows you behind the scenes of conditional formats and how they're evaluated. I put a link to that in the video description so you can troubleshoot your conditional formatting formulas. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Be sure to check out my project management dashboard video where I use this technique along with others to create an interactive dashboard. You can download the Excel file containing the completed Gantt chart for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.